Hey everyone, today we're going to be doing some macro photography with the Sigma 105mm 2.8 lens. So today I've come out to my local park, I didn't want to go too far because as you can see it's absolutely chucking it down with snow which is amazing but I didn't really want to drive in it. So I've come quite local and I'm going to be using the macro lens just to see what I can find. I'm really not sure what I'm going to find today. There's lots of snow around obviously so I might get some nice close-up ice crystals on the leaves and things but really I'm just going to be walking around seeing what I can find and talking about the lens as I go. So if you've seen any of my recent macro videos, you will know that I've been using the Tokina 100mm, which is a pretty good lens. However, it doesn't autofocus on the Z body using the FTZ adapter. So I wanted to get an upgrade, or just something that would work on the Z body. And I looked around, I thought about getting the new ZMC 105mm, but that's very expensive. And to be honest, there's a bit of a backlog with orders, so you can't really get hold of that very easily at the moment. So instead I got this Sigma one instead, the 105mm 2.8. It does work with the Z body and it will work with the focus shift shooting feature. So that's really good. And yeah, today is the first proper outing with actual macro photography. So just thought I'd come out and see how it performs. It is weather sealed, so that's obviously really good for today. <laughs> It is quite a long heavy lens, so rather than having the camera mounted onto my tripod, I've actually got my tripod attached to the mounting plate on the FTZ adapter. So that just puts it more in the middle between the camera and the lens, and just help to balance it just a little bit better. I much prefer a longer macro lens, around 100 or 105 millimetres, compared to say a 50 or 60 millimetre macro lens. That's just so that you get a bit more distance from your subject, and that's really useful if you're taking shots of insects or things like that where you don't want to get too close and disturb them. On this lens you've got some switches, so you've got a focus limiter switch, so you can switch it from focusing close up to your subject, or you can have it from 0.45 meters to infinity, or you can have the full range, but just remember if you set it to the full range, it's gonna take longer for it to focus on your subject. You've got autofocus or manual switch, self-explanatory, and you've got optical stabilization switch, and you've got one and two. So mode one is the kind of typical mode where it will compensate for movement in two directions. If you switch it to two, I believe that's more of a horizontal stabilization, so it will correct for things that are moving horizontally to the camera.
So like I said, this lens will work with focus shift shooting and cameras that do support that, like the Z7. I'm not gonna go into detail about how focus shift shooting works because I've already made a video on that and I'll link up top to that now. But basically the technique that I'm using right now is to focus on the nearest part of my subject, so these berries at the moment, and then I'm setting the focus shift shooting to take a series of shots at gradually closer focal lengths. And then later on I'll stack all those together into one image to create a greater depth of field in the image. All right, I'm gonna wrap up now. I haven't captured many individual subjects today, but that's because with the focus stacking technique, I'm taking around about 100 shots for every single subject. So I've got a lot to edit when I get back, but I'm gonna get back on the computer now and we'll analyze the image quality from the Sigma 105 millimeter. It's always really fun to get out in the snow. And as a photographer, my first instinct is usually to go out and get some really nice snowy landscapes. So it's really nice to do something different and get some macro shots this time around. And I really enjoyed using the Sigma 105mm 2.8 lens. It performed really well. It's a really good lens. I think the images that I've shown throughout the video hopefully illustrate that it is really sharp, which you kind of expect with a good macro lens but it really is high quality and sharp and works really well with the Z7. It is one-to-one -one magnification, so that means that it will reproduce your subject at a one-to-one -one ratio on your sensor, but that will only work at the closest focusing distances. So that's around about 31 millimeter, I believe. If you're further away from that, you're not gonna get one-to-one. -one. So bear that in mind if you do want that, it's probably not gonna be an issue. And also bear in mind that the maximum aperture changes at the closest distances. It's rated at 2.8, but if you're at the closest distances, you're not going to get 2.8. You're probably going to be around about 4.5 or 5. But like I said, it is really sharp. And probably sharpest around about f11, f8 to f11. I was using slightly wider apertures than that because it was quite low light. I had quite a bit of wind as well, so I had to use a fast shutter speed high ISOs and a wide aperture and to compensate for that wide aperture which was giving me a really shallow depth of field I was having to take a lot of shots so around about 100 shots for every single subject on some images I could discard some of those shots so I got it down to sometimes 70 or even down to about 40 images and then I could stack those together and create an image that was fully in focus uh, more or less from front to back of my subject but the lens was sharp even down to those wide apertures and all across the frame as well from even to the edges it was sharp so that was great the focusing is fast it's accurate it's quiet it's all internal so the lens doesn't change size when you're focusing and it doesn't rotate either so you can use filters on there i think it's a 62 millimeter thread i didn't really notice any optical problems there was no chromatic aberration or flaring or ghosting or anything like that. I mean, I wasn't shooting into the sun, I didn't have any sun, so maybe I will need to do some further tests to see if that's an issue, but certainly when I was out in the snow using it, I didn't get any of those problems. So there's not a lot to complain about with this lens, really. I really, really enjoyed using it, and I got some great images, or at least some really high quality images. And also the price is great. I picked this up for brand new for a third of the cost of the brand new ZMC 105mm lens. So I'm more than happy with that and it really did the job. 
Just got a few more images to show you, so I'll put those up on screen now. And that's it for another week. Another video's gone by. If you're a regular, thanks a lot for watching. I really do appreciate it, as I said last week. And if you are new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can click down here on the big red button or over here on my face. And that way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. Sometimes it's macro, sometimes it's landscape, sometimes it's wildlife, or sometimes it's something a little bit different like street photography. But I try and get the best video I can each and every week. So that's it for this one, but please do join me for the next one. And until then, thanks a lot everyone, and bye for now.